What's up everybody, this is D from Brooklyn coming to you with some really, really aggressive fragging and rescaping of the All-in-One 20 frag tank. Um, as you've seen over the years, this tank has gone through many metamorphoses, if I can get the words out. I've, I've grown many corals in here, and as you know, when you have a small tank, it can quickly become overgrown. So had to do some really aggressive uh, fragging and mushroom removal because these babies grow really fast and I'm going to show you how I did that so let's go from this moment on you will now be known as shark bait shark bait ooh ha ha welcome brother shark bait shark bait ooh ha ha enough of the shark bait shark bait ooh bop now, of course, this is not something for the faint of heart, and I'm not going to really go into the actual breaking and fragging of the rock, but I'm showing you the tools of the trade. Now, I pretty much have dedicated tools that I use just for the tank, because when you use metal tools, you tend to get a little rust, and uh, I don't plan on using the regular tools that I use for everyday maintenance or house keeping or anything like that, but I have my little micro tooth size saw. I have a, a bigger miter saw, which is good for cutting into the rock before you actually chisel it. I found that you can get more defined cuts instead of just whacking it with the hammer. If you can get a cut into the rock and then chip it away, you get more defined cuts. As you can see right here, because I've already done that with this real reef rock, if you remember. Maybe I can get a clip <laughs> to tie you in what this rock used to look like. Um, but it was definitely encroaching on this other rock. And coral tend to do that. They spread really quickly by opening up. You can see one right here. If I can zoom in, this one is actually attaching to a piece that I don't want it attached to. Right over here, you can see this green mushroom growing onto that rock as it has done there. So, um, Zen you will do that, Zoas will do that, a lot of coral will do that, even onto the glass as you can see here. So it becomes really important to start fragging them out. So I saw them, then I give them a little hack and just break the defined pieces off. So I'll show you a little bit of that right here. Now right here I did this outside because if you smell what it smells like right here in my little basement bathroom, it stinks. Especially if you're dealing with mushrooms or leather corals, soft corals tend to let out a really distinct smell when you take them out of the water. Or Actually, I found a dead snail shell behind this rock when I took it out of the tank. So another reason to not have a very, very densely... Uh, coral place tank or even with rock it's good to move your rock around a lot because you get dead spots and dead spots are just a haven for detritus and bacteria so you can see right here where i took the saw tool you can actually see it on the saw blades and just took a nice cutting into that on a diagonal and then i took the hammer and chiseled right into it i'm not going to go into it because that would just make the video longer than it needs to be but if you cut into it a good ways, and this is a tufa rock, this isn't the, this isn't the real reef rock. Tufa is really good if you want to put corals in to remove. I did a video earlier on just cutting into rock and making your own little frag holders. This used to be covered in chalice, as you can see. I flipped it over because I wasn't using it for chalice anymore, and it was encroaching all over the place, even into the hole where the plug was you can see chalice skeleton really really interesting um but it was really encroaching on this tufa and you could see with a drill bit with a masonry drill bit it was very easy to drill into it and very easy to cut with a saw so it makes it good for future down the road where you think you may be moving rock or replacing it or even using this as frag grow out like you can cut this flat as you can see here, if you look in that last video, I cut this flat so that I could use this whole surface for flag plugs. I had like three or four plugs here. I had one here, one there, one there. And you can see I pop them out when I want to move them to another tank. And I actually can sit this flat and do the same thing on every side. So when it comes time to remove those very aggressively growing coral, it's good to either pre-cut it 
or very, very uh, carefully plan out where you're going to put your frags if they're a very aggressive type like Xenia or any soft coral. So um, let that be the tip of the day when trying to remove coral, pre-cut it, and then just take a flat screwdriver and the hammer and just whack it around and they come off very nicely. Now, before my cardinal, <laughs> my pajama cardinal gets too used to the empty space, I see him swimming right on in there. I can put this piece back where I got it. I'm not sure whether I want to put it this side up. I have a couple of holes there, so I actually think I will put it this side up. So if I get a uh, bird's nest or anything like that that I want to put in here, I'll actually have a hole to stick the piece in very hard to see from that angle so I'll give you a different view here where you can actually see the holes and uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, point out is uh, surface area is very close to the top of the water um, you don't want to place too many holes near the top of the water because if you have frag plugs attached to your coral they tend to catch all the detritus going into your overflow if you have your overflow near that rock, the detritus will pretty much get caught in all those crevices. So you want to have a strong flow or avoid doing that. If you have it low in the water like that, you tend not to have as much of a problem. That's going to be a lower flow area. So I'm going to put maybe another Pofona statue or something that I want to encrust in that little corner. And uh, one of the other things was... Um, the mushrooms were getting ready to spread a little more than I wanted them into this rock. I don't want any mushrooms on this side of the tank. So I'm going to remove these from the glass as well. Just, it's kind of like gardening. When you have a garden, you want to, you want to control your beds. You don't want everything spreading across the whole garden. You want to have zones like this is green, this is purple, and this will have a little uh, growing just kind of covering it, just kind of separating it, and then having your flow dedicated to making sure that you get circulation all around the tank. But that's one of the reasons why you're almost always going to have to have a little gardening and pruning time. And if you can have rock rubble, that is absolutely the best. As you can see, I always keep little pieces of rock instead of having really large pieces. So when the coral do attach to them, I can just pull them out like I did with that red tufa and just give the tank a overall pruning and clean look. And you want to start all over again. If you want to change your scape, this gives you the opportunity to start all over again. But as far as removing things from the rock, which you're almost always going to have to do and look at this, I see some pieces. I don't know if those are Zoas just kind of ended up up under there. <laughs> so uh, this is a perfect example of how things spread. I don't even remember putting anything there. And this orange one that just popped up out of the blue. I don't even have an orange. I may have attached that a long time ago and completely forgot about it. But uh, when it comes time to prune it, I can easily take these little pieces out, take the little rock rubble out. If it attaches like this, I can just pop those out, trade them, sell them, bring them to another tank, what have you. Even this, and remember, there's no sand in this tank. You can use frag holders or you can use PVC, which I wasn't sure if coral would attach to PVC, but here's the answer. My snowflake is really interested in what the hell I'm doing because <laughs> I moved his pineapple. He's kind of PO'd. Um, so that'll be it. Really simple. Trying to keep this short. I don't want to go really, really far into it. I think you get the picture, but being able to reorganize and frag or remove corals whenever you need to is always going to be a necessity in any well to do tank so this is d from brooklyn hoping that that little tip helped you out love peace and hair grease be kind to each other and every day my goal is to learn something new so i hope i can share that with you guys as well so see you next time i'm out he's like this guy's always messing with our home